I have to say this is the first time I'm doing something like this. Um, I had one concert with my instrument. This is the second time I'm yeah, trying to, to show something. Let's see what happens. Um, uh, but we are friends, so um, yeah. <laughs> I see this as my uh, living room, so you're sitting on my sofa, so no sweat. Um, there will probably go something uh, Something will go wrong. But I want to, tell, uh, to talk about the new controllers for music. Um, and uh, first, um, just a little demo demonstration. Um, as I said, I don't have slides. I thought about making slides, but you will see all the innards of what I'm doing. What I'm doing on my computer is up there. You, will, you can uh, look at everything. Um, I do that because uh, that, that, for me, is the interesting thing. Um, slides, you know, it's, it's a PDF, it doesn't do anything. This is the thing that's interactive. So um, you can look at whatever I do um, and whatever I do wrong. Um, that's the instrument working, you see the green line. Um, I have put it on MIDI, it gives out MIDI, uh, and I played around with uh, Ableton Live to make a little bit of sounds. Um, uh, crazy sounds, I like crazy sounds. I'm uh, not much of, uh, yeah, class classical stuff. I think classical stuff is cool, but if I want to sound like a piano, I'll take a piano. If I want to sound like a violin, um, I think a violin is still the best way to have a violin. So I'm, I'm interested in uh, crazy sounds and I play around a lot with uh, Ableton Live. Uh, and since the instrument is working without me, um, I can use a second one. It's not really hearable. I have to work on my demos. As you see, so you have to have visual feedback. Uh, this is an audio cube. It has four sensors. It ca you can have more than one, and then you can link them. And it's also fun because it's light, and you can work with your hands. Unfortunately, I can't work with the Eigenharp and the audio cube. Um, today, I will just uh, show you some, some different kinds of music nowadays. You can make music, and you can have stuff going on. So let's put this out for a moment. Uh, one of the big questions, um, who am I, is answered with that. This is my slideshow. <laughs> and yes, it's a processing, yes, I have programmed it. Um, this has a sound feature which, unfortunately, I don't get to work now. Uh, I'm too stressed. But I've written my slides in XML and I've put it in here and theoretically it makes sounds out of my slides. This would be the white uh, moving uh, part. So that's my name. I decided to uh, call myself a clown künstler. I like the German word. Normally I uh, have the tendency to do English words, but this one, clown kunst, is a very nice word. I'm not a musician. Um, I have my... Uh, eight years of piano lessons as a child, as a teenager. This is 20 years. Um, I have no experience with musical instruments in the 20 years um, in between. Um, this is totally new for me. I uh, actually started two years ago uh, and one year ago I decided I will do that professionally. Um, I have my instrument now for six months. Um, it's an instrument. 
Uh, every one of you who's plays an instrument knows that after six months I'm not proficient in it, and I know that, but waiting for five years until I really can play the instrument is kind of boring, and I want to um, somehow uh, get experience with it, so, uh, and, and get other people to play with it. Um, the big variant is here, I have a small one, I'll get to that later. Um, that's about me. Um, I'm from the technical science, science background. Um, that's why I write my own programs, um, which is nowadays actually very good if you can do that because a lot of this new sound stuff is software. And if you can write software, um, you can do whatever you want. Um, this is very much work in progress, as I said. Uh, it's slightly experimental. I don't know what works, what don't work. If you have any questions, please uh, ask. Um, I'm happy to uh, answer. Um, okay, these ones they are called audio cubes. Um, I, I will show you some controllers I think are, are very, very nice. Um, these are really, you can have more than one, they make light, they are easy to use. Um, I like them a lot to, to have them just to, to play around with filters. Um, you can also compose with them or do other stuff. There is also a C++ AP for them. I uh, haven't got it working yet. Um, but they are really fun. You can um, use it for people who do music, who have experience with music. You can also use them with any VST or audio unit. And you can um, actually control all this stuff like this. So, also, um, does Eigenhard actually allow someone to play on it, or is it happy on its own? Um, yeah, you can play on it. Oh. <laughs> I will play on it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, it has a lot of features that, that we saw is the arranger, it's a sequencer that's built in. Um, oh, that's why it doesn't work. So, actually, now it's making sound because I touch it. Um, and this is technically something that doesn't work. Also, actually, I can connect this one with this one. I use this one. Um, these these uh, keys are very sensitive, and they are hard to control. And I use this one sometimes to, to actually uh, get, give me visual feedback what I'm doing. That they are, these are very good for visual feedback. Um, so. It's not happy here. It's really not I'm happy. I'm holding here. it, I'm tender. Oh, I'm playing it. Okay, now I've put the playing out. So, um, other things I looked at. Um, this is my band colleague Rito. With him, I was at Frankfurt Music Messe. This is a different kind of instrument, you see it here, it's called a continuum. Um, I looked at it, it was an alternative for the Eigen harp. Um, the problem is it's too much like a piano. I hated playing the piano. I s to this day I'm happy that I can read notes and play from, from a, um, play, play them by sight. Um, but pianos isn't my instrument and this thing is like a piano just with a continuous um, surface, you can press it, and it's pressure sensitive, and it's really nice if you have this, if you like to have a, a more continuous sound, this one doesn't have a real continuous sound. This one does. Um, you see the, the guy um, who is uh, making them, he holds a hole sensor, which is how these things work, and I just want to show you a small little video of this, because I think Okay, now I have no sound. 
Okay, you can't hear it, you can see it. Um, it's very interesting, but the, the big one is actually really big and it's really heavy. Uh, they are really cool, um, but you can't transport them. I can't. I can lift this one, I can't lift this one, I can't even lift the small one. They have a small one that's this size, which is 20 kilos or more. But I think this, is, this stuff is very interesting. I show you only stuff I've seen and I've tried. Um, this stuff is very interesting. This is very new. There are more and more things like this coming. There's more and more innovation uh, about instruments. Um, and what, what's important is they aren't actual instruments. They are controllers, like game controllers. Um, there is also this one. This is Something you can also have for the iPad. Um, it's a table um, where you can have little cubes on it and you can uh, make your own synthesizer with your little cubes. We have a film for this one too. It will be silent also. It doesn't want to play it. Okay. Yeah. Technical difficulties. You can you can see it a little bit. You have these cubes. You can move them around. You can make sand. Um, they are very cool. Uh, this one needs a lot of um, space, and this is fixed. This is stationary. This is to play around. Um, if you have it, I, I think it would be cool if we have it in our living rooms. Everybody has his own little synthesizer model kit in his living room, um, doubling as a coffee table. This would be cool. Um, so what, what, what is the thing that's interesting about this stuff? Um, why is this stuff coming? All, all this stuff has um, one thing, they are controllers. The sound is coming from the laptop. The laptop is doing the heavy lifting of the audio stuff. And these are just new controllers. You have also, maybe you have seen Imogen Heap has uh, ha made uh, has some people made for her some, some special kind of equipment so that she can wave and dance and the music plays around that. Um, that's with this one, with this one, with the continuum, it's everything. They are controllers, they have data stream, they give the user the possibility um, to play an instrument without having to use the laptop. Um, using the laptop is very cool in a way, but if I stay like this, Behind the laptop, you don't see me. You have no uh, way of seeing what I'm doing. And I have no connection to you because I have my connection to the laptop. And this is bad for music if you want to really play music for people. Um, and nowadays, the, laptop is, the laptops, normal laptops, are strong enough to, to handle the audio in a good rate and to synthesize stuff. Um, this demo I can't make. So there is lots of software out there. Um, there is, um, I, I've gone from very basic um, ground roots to uh, stuff everybody knows who's DJing. Um, SDK and Juice, this is C++ libraries, you can uh, program everything. Super Collider, Chuck, these are programmable, uh, how to say, these are scripting languages. Let's say scripting languages. MaxMSP, Pure Data, um, PWGL, Open Music, are uh, visual synthesizers. Um, the difference is what they are built upon. Uh, MaxMSP is C++, you can use Java, JavaScript for it. Pure Data is the open source version of MaxMSP. PWGL is Lisp. A lot of music is written in Lisp because Lisp is actually for sequential uh, composition very practical. Um, the Lisp List processing is actually um, something you actually want to do in algorithmic composition. Um, shuffling of lists, permutation, things like this. So stuff like PWGL um, started and Open Music is a slightly different version, also based on Lisp uh, from Ilkom from France. Um, then there are new, newer stuff like Extempore, Overtone and Lua RV. These are real interactive. Um, all the other stuff, MaxMSP for instance, you make your pretty synthesizer and then you start it and then it works. And you can actually control some stuff. You have sliders, you have knobs, 
but you can't script it in real time. And there's a new, um, some new stuff like extempore and overtone, which you can script in real time. They, have, uh, um, they are mostly based on Lisp-like languages. Extempore is scheme, overtone is closure, um, Lua or V is Lua, naturally, um, and they have a REPL. So you can um, write your stuff down, have it uh, execute, and do it again, which is very practical if you want to build your synth. Then there is stuff like Reactor, AudioWolf, and Plog, Bidul, which are actually more or less a little bit less functional than something like Max MSP or Pure Data, um, but are much easier to learn and much easier to, to uh, integrate in something like this. Um, this thing uses audio units a lot. Uh, this one is MIDI, but also you can put audio units in there and Reactor, AudioMog, and Plog Bidu. AudioMog, now I'm not sure. But the other two are audio units which you can build your own synthesizer out of, of, of stuff. Then there are naturally the normal audio units. The, the ones I use is Zebra 2 and Omnisphere, which are very, very free. You can do a lot of stuff um, if you delve into around this size manual. Um, and the stuff everybody uses um, to get the sound from A to B or to DJ, which li is live, logic, or Cubase. I have live, as you have seen. Um, that's just because it was the first I met. So, so software is, is there. Um, if you know how to program, you are actually have a good start, um, because some of this stuff is pretty, uh, pretty, uh, complicated. So, iPad. I have one somewhere. This is the most fun you can have if you want just to make a little bit music, you know, like you're sitting there on your couch and you don't know what to do. It's Sunday, it's rainy outside. Um, and if you want to do some nice little music you have, you can take your iPad. There's fun stuff on there. Um, there is from Cork. There is the IMS20, which actually in real life, it's an analog synth. The MS20 in real life is a really big synth and really expensive. On the iPad it costs 20 Swiss francs. So you have more or less uh, analog synths. You have stuff like Animoke. Um, I have to show it like this because I haven't cabled it up. That's the wrong one. Okay, I'll, I'll sh if anybody is interested, I can show them. Um, okay, now let's come to the Eigenharp, which is this thingy. Um, it's called Eigenharp because um, the guy who make, made it um, is actually a, phys a physicist and mathematician, and it's from Eigenmatrix. So that's the Eigen, which is actually German, yes, and Harp, like Harfe. Um, I have to do a little disclaimer. Um, they invited me to the developers conference. Um, I had to fly there, but I had the, they, they, they showed me around and, and stuff like this. Not only me. We were 10 people. Um, it was the first developers conference for the thing. Um, I just have to say it because I want to say it because so that you understand where my knowledge comes from. Um, it's fresh. It was one week ago, uh, ago and we did the uh, some tours, and I want to show you some stuff we did. Um, it's too big, you can't see that. Okay, um, it was in Devon, outside of nowhere. These things are actually made somewhere where there is no public transport, there is no um, cell phone network, nothing. It's just in rural Devon. Um, they are assembled naturally, the stuff is made somewhere else, mostly Taiwan. Um, what is an Eigenharp? It's this thing, it's actually, it's the really special things are these buttons. These buttons are very, uh, okay, the software crashed. Um, <laughs> today is not my day. <laughs> it's not Friday the 13th, but it's not my day. Um, these, these buttons are really, really, um, um, react, uh, they react re really easy. Um, there are 120 um, on this one, the small one. 
which I have here is very practical for travels. This was my first one, this was my second one. Um, this one has 18, same buttons. There is a middle size for this. Um, that's the Pico, Tau I don't have, and that's the Alpha. These are, uh, were not available in Switzerland when I bought it. I bought it blind because I saw the YouTube videos and it's cool. Um, for me, for me it's, it's the ideal instrument because I, I think of it as actually having a 3D um, surface area which I can use. And as you see, the lighting up, you don't hear anything. But it lights up, that normally makes sound. It's, it's really, I have to, when I'm, when I'm wearing uh, white sleeves, the sleeves are pay, playing with me. But I can also do that. It's not going to hurt it. So um, whatever I want to do, it's going to work. I can softly move my hand, I can hit it. It's not going to, to do anything. I have a breath controller and I have a strict controller. So it's, it's, it's an instrument that gives you actually the, um, the control possibilities you have with something like a violin or a guitar. It's, it's even if you, if you just breathe, it feels that. And that's cool. And that's the new generation of controllers for music all have this. They are more behaving less like a synthesizer. You press a key and that's it. More like something that you can, even if you have played your note, you can change this note. It's pliable. You can more or less shift it, do something with it, like you can with a violin string. If you have a violin string, you can move it, you can do vibrato, you can, do, you can shift your tone, you can shift your pitch, and this thing allows the same. And that's the new generation of controllers for music. And I think this is also, this will, this will change how, how uh, electronic music works. Because now the instrument is actually for the player like a classical instrument, like a classical violin. So, um, what's no two minutes? And I had to fear that I'm, I'm too too uh, too fast. Okay, there's a lot of hardware involved, like the base station, which which makes the data. Um, these things are data. Um, they they have a stream of data. The stream of data is extremely uh, high resolution. They need to be uh, controlled. Um, I'm not going into this. But what I'm going into is some, wh what's really cool is, I mean, my instrument now is the Eigenharp. I'm talking about the Eigenharp because that's the instrument for half a year. I've done uh, research, I've programmed for it, I'm doing stuff with it. Um, the software is partially open sourced. Um, that means you can look at it, you can write new stuff for it. It's not only the Eigenharp, it's for a lot of stuff today because um, now I have an instrument where I actually have the controller, which is this one, and now I can write my instrument. I'm actually building my instrument. Whatever it is my instrument should, could, or may do, I can build it. If I can think of it, I can build it. Okay, you need to be a software programmer to do that. It's C++, <laughs> but it's going to be easier from, from now on because actually there is building a, a, a so some libraries so to integrate it. Um, but it's cool if you can do that, if you can actually write your own sounds. It's writing music today is not only writing a composition, notes, but also writing your own sound, and that's really cool. So this was the discussion. Um, I have to say from all these people you see there uh, on the DEF CON, only this guy here in the middle, Antonio, is a musician, the rest are developers. The rest are software t guys, um, and so so you see uh, today today um, you can actually program your own music instruments, and as a musician, you go to developers conferences. But also that's how it looks played. It's, it's getting part of it. I'm, I'm getting used to having the laptop where the sound comes from and this to, to have what I, what I actually uh, touch. But 
it's also, it's, it, when you touch it, you don't get it. I mean, it's so tactile that actually this disconnect, I feel now, and you feel probably now because I'm having the computer here, um, this disconnect goes away. So it, when you play it, you play it. And you have the feeling the sound comes from here, even if it comes from up there yet now or something. It's, it's something that's so direct and so fast that you don't get any of this anymore. But I mean, this, the thing is, the thing is, laptops get faster. The, the reason why it's not in here is that I can change this one, and this one every year they bring a new laptop, and it's getting faster, faster, better with audio naturally without having to change this one, and that's the reason why it's disconnected. So if you're interested, come and, and try it out. Um, just if you want to have a feel, it's no problem for me. You can't break it. I tried hard enough, it's not breakable. <laughs>